Good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us quiet our hearts for worship.
Good morning. Let's stand and worship God. We are called to follow, to walk in the way of justice and righteousness, for we are children of God. We are called to serve, to be Christ with and for one another, for we are the salt of the earth. We are called to shine, to be beacons of hope and witnesses to truth, for we are the light of the world. Come, you who are claimed as the children of God, salt of the earth and light of the world, let us worship the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of wonder, even when we have betrayed our callings to live and to love, still you receive us. You delight in our becoming and set us on paths of healing and restoration. May your grace set us free that we may be uninhibited in pursuing what is just, what is good, and what is holy. Amen.
Are you thirsty for grace? Are you hungry for mercy? God is calling. Come to the waters. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. Almighty God, we have asked for your righteous judgment against others, but we have not acknowledged the sin in our own lives. We have worshipped you with our lips, but have dishonored you with our actions. We have prayed for you to end the suffering in our world, yet we have not practiced compassion and generosity toward others. Our religion has become the source of quarreling rather than a testimony to your grace. Forgive our self-righteousness and give us integrity of heart that we may shine forth the light of your salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Do not fear, says the Lord, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Since God as Christ has forgiven us, let us also forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Grace to you and peace in our Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome you to worship this Sunday. Special word of welcome to all the families here for baptism. We're glad that you're here. I'd invite you to take the friendship pad found on the aisle and fill that out and pass it down the row and back so that you might see those who are sitting around you to greet each other at close of worship. Um, would remind you that in the parlor after service, there's an opportunity if you have any questions about the congregation, someone there can answer those. We've just begun a new members class this morning. If you're interested in learning more about the 
ministry or mission of the church, just speak to someone there about that. Also in the parlor, uh, our Valentine's Day show for the choir, supporting their upcoming trip for our youth choir and the adult choir this summer. Uh, please go ahead and buy tickets for the upcoming Valentine's Day show. Um, and there's also any questions you can have about the silent auction, someone can answer those. Uh, Lenten programs are beginning. I'll be leading a Lenten retreat, and also there are some Lenten studies. Please see me if you're interested in all of those. And also, after the close of this service, there'll be a, a service for prayer and healing in the parlor, or rather in the chapel. Come, let us continue our worship. The Lord be with you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, and prepare our hearts to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, that hearing we may also obey your will and live our lives to your glory. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Our reading this morning, first reading, comes from the prophet Isaiah, the 58th chapter, where he contrasts false and true worship. Hear the word of God. Shout out. Do not hold back. Lift your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinances of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with wicked fist. Such fastings as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them and not hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall call for help. And God will say, here I am. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
God is our refuge, God is our strength, God is our refuge, God is our strength. Alleluia, happy are those who fear the Lord and take delight in God's commands. Their children will have power in the land. The children of the righteous will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their justice will stand forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright, for those who are just and full of compassion. God is our refuge, God is our strength. Happy are those who lend with good grace and are honest in all their dealings. The righteous will never fail. They will be remembered forever. For them evil rumors hold no fear. Their faith is strong, they trust in the Lord. They are not worried or afraid. They are certain to triumph over their foes. They are generous and righteous, and they will always be honored. The wicked see and in anger grind their teeth. They melt away. Their desire comes to nothing. God is our refuge. God is our strength. We continue our reading from the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount from Matthew's Gospel. And as you may remember from last week, Jesus begins his sermon with a benediction. Looking out onto the faces of his congregation, he pours out blessings. Blessed are the meek, the merciful, the peacemakers, the persecuted, those who mourn, those poor in spirit. He sees the faces of all of that in his congregation. Disciples desperate in need for a blessing. And then after the blessing, he says this from Matthew, the fifth chapter, and I'm going to read verses 13 through 16. Hear the word of God. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God just utters a word, let there be light, and boom, there it is. I like that. I told someone in Bible study the other day, I love the thought of God saying it, and suddenly, there it is. Everything changed. I then told that person, look, I've been speaking the word of God for years, and I don't know if anything has changed. That person said, I agree. I said, you do? <laughs> he said, yes, I agree. You've been speaking and speaking and speaking for years and years and years. These are the people of God that I have to deal with. Oh, to be God. In the beginning... God just says a word, and boom, there it is, heaven and earth. 
God says a word and suddenly planets and stars says a word and then banana and bird, fish and fly, you and me, and God said it is good. And it is good. So did you hear this morning what the Son of God said of us all? God said to the body of Christ, you are the light of the world. Boom, here it is. Okay. Look at each other. You, don't look at me. Look at each other <laughs> and see yourselves as the light of the world. Why don't you say that to someone next to you? You are the light of the world. Go ahead, say it to each other. Yeah, I can tell you're not buying it. <laughs> I'm always reminded of the children's chapel I conducted many years ago. Children's chapel, leading children's chapel, it's so much filled with joy and light. Children, they come bouncing into worship. None of you come bouncing into worship. They come bouncing into worship and then they head into the pews and they're Heads disappear, and then they sit up, and then all you see are just faces, beaming faces. So much light. Well, I remember many years ago, this kid comes in to worship, bouncing down the aisle, and sits on the front row right there. And this kid is wearing a gold crown on his head. It's his birthday. And he's a chunk of a kid, just pink cheeks and big grin, and he's all into his birthday. And, and my chapel theme was, you are the light of the world. And I had flashlights and cell phone lights and floodlights. I just had lights of all kinds of things. And, and then I said, you know what Jesus says? You are the light of the world. And that kid, that chubby-faced kid with the crown on, just roared back and said, ha, ha, ha. We're not kid lights, we're kids. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 Jesus says you're a light. <laughs> we're not lights, we're kids. <laughs> and this went on for some time. <laughs> Little heckler on the front row <laughs> with a crown on his head thinking he's God or something. But I just think about all that and just reminds me of how hard it is to believe what God says. I wonder what those people who gathered up on that mountain and heard those words directly from the lips of Jesus thought. Jesus looked at them and said, you are the light of the world. And did they just belly laugh and say, look, we're not light, just look at us. We're people poor in spirit. We're people who mourn. We're, we're people who are meek and tired and hungering and thirsting. We're not light. When God has God's hands full. When God created us, God said everything is good. And no other thing in all creation doubts that. That word of God that says you're good. You can ask the ocean, the ocean just swells with goodness. You can go into the forest and the trees clap their hands in thanksgiving of all the goodness. Morning has broken and the bird whistles giving glory to God. Walk into the woods and you can hear the voice of God saying good. You're good. But as I said, God has her hands full when she created us. For God gave us the gift of creation too. And of all the things that we create, we create doubt. We so fear. We make enemies real or imagined. We take the whole of God's goodness and divide it in half and say, this is good and this is bad. These are winners and these are losers. 
Do you remember the saying, it doesn't matter if you win or lose, but you remember the saying. Who believes that anymore? You play to win, like Duke did to Carolina last night. <laughs> Had to get that in there. You win at all costs, like Duke did to Carolina last night. <clears throat> but we have bought into that concept, not only in sports, but in everything else. If you're not winning, you're a loser. I heard on the radio just yesterday, someone who suffers from depression said, you know what, if you broke your arm, people would gather up around you and they'd sign your cast. They won't leave you out. But if you suffer from depression, people run the other way. They just don't want to get caught up in a losing proposition. Wow. Winners or losers, it's in our politics. Oh, how we want to support a winner. I don't know how many people have asked me about the snafu of the Iowa caucus, like I had something to do with it. <laughs> Look, I have never been to that state. I don't even know where that state is on a map. Okay, that's not true, but <laughs> it just doesn't look good to be on, a, on the bad side of things. Just run away. Someone or something has got us believing that we have to win at all costs. We believe in words of those who wish to divide us, that we are red and blue. And they have brought that concept into the church. <laughs> I have heard pastors say that they minister to purple churches. I think I may have said that myself. We have a purple church. That means that there are red people in the church and there are blue people in the church. And then the job of the purple pastor is to walk a tightrope to figure out how to preach the word of God in such a way that it does not offend either side. Which means we might as well replace the scripture with the ingredients that go into making paste. The purple church is a lie. There is no red church. There is no blue church. There is only the body of Christ. And Jesus says to the politics of this world, render under Caesar the things that are Caesar's, but my life and my death are bigger than all of that. So dear people, can we be a little careful about what we're following? How many words have you spoken about politics this week? And how many words have you spoken in prayer? How many words have you spoken in kindness and mercy and healing and hope? Lord, we're not lights, we're politics. I do believe, I do believe we all need to decide for whom we are voting. That is to say, who we're going to follow. Not on a road that leads to November, but a road that goes on and on and on and on throughout all eternity. God said, you are a, the light of the world, a city on a hill, cannot be hidden. Let your light shine before others. And once upon a time, there were people who needed to hear just that. But there were others who wanted to follow some other word. But there were those people who needed to hear that they were the light of the world 
to hear that their power or lack of it did not come from people with the names like Decius and Nero and Domitian and Trajan and Hadrian. They longed to hear the word of God, that there was a God, and they longed for a blessing. They longed to hear the truth. You are the light of the world. And those peacemakers and those who mourned and those meek ones and those poor in spirit, they listened to it. They listened to it with ears open and hearts open. And they began to love the unlovable. They sacrificed for one another. They welcomed folks who were thrown out of other things. They visited the prisoners. And they said that, you know, the rest of the world may have forgotten about you, but we have not. We have you in our hearts. God doesn't give up on anyone. They were there for those in desperation and depression. And people came to the light. And the light grew and grew and grew and grew. And the Caesars of the world, they quaked in their shoes at it because no one was buying what they were selling. Folks just didn't want to win Caesar's way, and they refused to bow down to it. And Caesar was afraid. The most powerful man in the world was afraid. And so he ordered his people to quench the light And he had followers who followed those orders. And they rounded up the light one by one, and they brought them into stadiums. And in the stadiums, there were lions. And there on the floor of a stadium, some Christian was brought out to the roar of a crowd and lunch for a lion. But before the lion was released, that one on the floor would fall to bended knee and utter a prayer and then look up in Caesar's direction with a glitter, a wink, a shine in the eye. And it made Caesar worry. It just sent him quaking in his shoes. And someone in the stand said, did you see that? See what? Did you see that glimmer in that one's eye? Did you see the power in all that? The mercy for an enemy? Did you see that? Such power and grace? And one by one, the stadium crowd emptied. So attracted to the light they were, the truth. And the truth is this, we are not called to be followers of a state religion. We are called to be in the image of God. And so like God, we love. We love all things, we fall in love. Like God, we rejoice in the cry of a baby. Like God, we have our hard days. Like God, we have good days. Like God, God, God loves a dog. You know God loves a dog. We love a dog, right? There are people in this world who love cats, believe it or not. (laughs) I know it's hard to believe, but that must mean something in God loves a cat too. Imagine that. That's some kind of love. We are people of this world who forget our dry cleaning. We are people who love to cook. We are people who can't stand cooking but love a good meal. We are people who will offer a koala bear a drink of water. And it will break our hearts. We are people who love to have our pictures taken. And we put it on the internet and hope that people will like us. We're made in the image of God. We are people who love to have someone listen to the sound of our voice. I imagine God wants someone to listen to the sound 
of God's voice, someone to hear. So I'll give you this. The next time you want to let the voice of politics define you, don't turn down the chance to give a little wink and allow the light of God to glimmer out of your eyes and to hear the voice of God saying, change the conversation. For you are the light of the world. You are followers of the eternal one. And you can't turn down the chance. You cannot turn down the chance to let God's light shine. During the singing of the hymn, I would invite children of the church to come up and sit on the floor in front of the chancel steps so they can take part in the baptism.
may be seated. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus and confident of his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death. United us to Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice. Let us remember with joy our own baptism as we celebrate. On behalf of the session, I present Nell Calder, the daughter of Sally and Thomas Avery, Thomas Mander, the son of Kelly and Sean McMullen, Ellen Jemison, the daughter of Kathleen and Owen Simcoe, Hatton Douglas, the son of Hayes and Houston Estes, and James Marshall, the son of Lucy Kay and Marshall Haggard, to receive the sacrament of baptism. Friends, relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to your child, do you? And to the congregation, do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture these children by word and deed, love and prayer, encouraging them to know and follow Christ and be faithful members of the Church, do you? We do. And for you children, do you promise to love these babies, to be their friend, and to tell them about Jesus? If you do, please say yes. Through baptism, we enter the covenant God has established. Within this covenant, God gives us new life, guards us from evil, and nurtures us in love. In embracing that covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. As God embraces you within the covenant, I ask you to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? Do you? And will you be Christ's faithful disciple obeying his word and showing his love. Will you? With the whole church, let us stand and confess our faith. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to sin to him and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved out over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. In the time of Noah, you destroyed evil by the waters of the flood, giving righteousness a new beginning. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea and into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. 
By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ set us free from sin and death and opened the way to eternal life. We thank you, O God, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. From it, we are raised to share in his resurrection, and through it, we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. Send your spirit to move over this water, that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sin of all who are cleansed by it. Raise them to new life. Graft them into the body of Christ. Pour out your spirit upon all these little ones so that they may have the power to do your will and continue to forever in the risen life of Christ. To you be all praise, honor, and glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. What's the name given to this child? Thomas Mander. Thomas Mander. Mander. Thomas Mander, child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the blessings of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you, Thomas, and be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Thomas, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever and ever. <coughs> Amen. Hard wakening there, isn't it? <laughs> what is the name given to this child? James Marshall. James Marshall, child of the covenant. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. May the blessings of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you, James Marshall, now and forevermore. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever and ever. Amen. Sorry. <laughs> Looks like many of you. Uh, what, <laughs> what name is given to this child? Patton Douglas. Patton, 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 Douglas. Patton Douglas. Patton Douglas, child of the covenant. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the blessings of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you, Hatton. Now and forevermore you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> name is given this child? Nell Calder. Nell Calder. Child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The blessings of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and be with you now and forevermore. Nell, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever and ever. Amen. I think we still have water left. Okay. <laughs> what is the Christian name of this child? Ellen Jemison. Ellen Jemison, child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. May the blessings of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and be with you now and forevermore. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit. And... <laughs> You are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever and ever. Amen. Well, with joy and thanksgiving, we welcome these into the body of Christ.
Let us bring the needs of the church, the world, and all in need to God's loving care. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Eternal God, in the order of your creation, you have given righteousness, justice, peace, and love for the enlightenment of all people. Keep us always in that light so throughout our lives we may reflect it, showing forth the glory of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Help us to be salt and light into the world that you love. Holy One who came as a child, we pray for your children everywhere. For those who are hungry, we pray for nourishment. For those who are fleeing, we pray for safety. For those who are ill, we pray for your healing. For those who are grieving, we pray for your peace. For those who are suffering, we pray for your presence. Holy Three, who patterns community, we pray for communities everywhere. For those who are divided, we pray for unity. For those who are isolated, we pray for connection. For those who are afraid, we pray for your courage. For those who are frustrated, we pray for new hope. We pray this day especially for those known to us who need your healing hand. Let us name them now in our hearts in the silence of the moment. Holy three and one and one and three, bless us in the work of faith that we might be truly faithful. Nourish us in the labor of love that we might show your love. Keep our hope steadfast that we may know your grace and your peace as we wait for your coming reign of justice and overwhelming love. O oh God, in your loving purpose, answer our prayers and fulfill our hopes. In all the things for which we pray, give us the will to seek to bring them about. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. With gratitude to God for all the blessings so richly bestowed upon us, with joy let us return of our life and labor as the ushers wait on us for the morning offering.
be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks. Loving God, we give thanks for all you have given to us and praise you for your astounding goodness. Receive the dedication of our hearts, minds, and bodies for the ministry of your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. the light of the world, a city shining on a hill, a light that cannot be hidden. So let your light shine forth among all people so that they may glorify the Father through your works. Go, knowing that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit are with us all, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.